big shocker we are pulling yet more crabgrass this is going to be an ongoing project i have i try to get roughly one to two buckets of bad grass pulled out um every day or every other day um we're we're, we're kind of starting to see some progress here i've been super busy um with water damage remodeling so i can actually get my home insurance um actually approved i guess you can say so i've been doing a lot of work around the house guys still trying to get the bathroom done um we're, we're so close to getting it there once we lay the tile we're pretty much um just cruising and cruise control from that point on but i'm going to show you what i've been doing with the actual bathroom as well as other home repairs so sit back relax and let's get sweaty so it's been a little over two weeks since my last upload and we're finally prepping the floor to do tile but since it is a hollow floor a wood floor underneath we have to take some extra steps before we lay it regardless let me show you what i did the last three days all of this soffit is brand new took me three days my nephew helped me we double coated it with some really good exterior paint and that's what i've been doing the last three days and apollo over here wants to say hi Apollo. oh and i've been pulling a lot of crabgrass if you can't tell that's where i recently stopped but we have so much more to do man there's always something to do i'm telling you since this isn't a concrete floor we have to put a material which is a concrete board called hardy backer it is a quarter inch thick and it comes in five by three foot sheets so i ended up getting i believe five sheets of that for the square footage of my bathroom so essentially we're going to put down the hardy backer screw it down obviously and then we will be able to put our tile on here obviously we're going to mud it and then this is a substitute for not having a concrete floor. And we're also gonna use some thin set, which is called Flex Bond, I believe, which is meant for hollow floors. So if there is a little bit of give, it's not going to crack the thin set underneath your tile. But very cool time lapse of me installing this hardy backer. So I don't have all the answers here, guys, but I'm trying my best to lay out my hardy backer and get a good plan of action before I actually start screwing it into the ground. Um, to my surprise, um, I should have done it vertically instead of horizontally, like you're seeing in this video. I would have had a very nice um, edge that butts up really close to the bath, uh, the bathtub lip. You'll see later what I'm talking about here. But uh, like, it's one of those things, man. You think you know, um, but then you don't. You know, <laughs> you think you know everything, and you tend to go, um, you tend to just work a little faster than you need to just to get the job done and i really wish i would have just gave it a little bit more thought on how i'm laying out my hardy backer here in terms of laying the hardy backer you do it in a brick formation essentially um you're never gonna have all of your seams line up um the same way especially on that short three foot edge there it's always going to meet a next piece like midway through so like you're doing every other row um and halving each row so you can really strengthen the actual seams on the hardy backer there and the terms of the door frame here i do have a small defect in my wood floor so i had to bring it out a little further than i would like to normally you stop the tile at the bottom of where the door will be shut um so it looks like a really nice seam against um transitioning from like a wood floor to a tile regardless um this is what it looks like when i'm all said and done here okay so the hardy backer is down it's not perfect i'm actually proud about this cut though it's a pretty gnarly little cut i'm not proud about the edge along the bathtub i'm going to silicone that just to make sure there's a really good seal because you're getting in and out of your shower you have a lot of water drippage here so we're going to make sure 100 percent that has a really good seal before we tile it so this takes place of a concrete floor a little tedious i should have laid it this way started with a full piece in the center five feet and then i could have actually butted up a lot better on these cuts but regardless it's still gonna work guys as long as you know how to really tape measure uh use a saw mark some lines pretty pretty simple just tedious with all of the uh, screws but so i ended up getting a new door and door frame 
This is a two four size door, right hand inward swing for the bathroom. The problem is it's not going to match the rest of the doors in the hallway because those are brown. So there's a lot to consider because I want all the doors to eventually match. But one more thing I want to show you that I did on my Forerunner. I ended up buying a new skid plate for the Forerunner. Hello, beautiful. Right down here, you should be able to see it. Beefy skid plate. I also replaced all of this one by here because it had some water damage. So I did that the other day, as well as give it a nice cap, repainted all of this along this carport. Give you guys a little sneak peek of my brand new snare drum as well from SJC 48 ply snare drum. So we're just trying to fix everything to where I have peace of mind throughout the summer to where I can really focus on my grass out here. Thank you guys so much for watching and y'all stay sweaty.